Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a very very highly requested video and that is how we want to get a 20 out of 20 on our chemistry IA3, so our research investigation. To the best of my knowledge I believe that you guys should actually be moving into that one now so I want to make this video. Now just before I start I wanted to announce something super duper cool. So I was thinking um, I really really want to help you guys out. Um, I know how hard it can be to find Find resources from actual students who have actually really recently done the QCE. So, so far all I've got up on my Etsy, which will be linked in the comments and in the description are some flashcards, not this, but ones that look like this and they're super simple and they have the um, official QCA de QCAA definitions and then also just other definitions. So these are my physics ones here. I've got them for all three sciences. And as we move closer to externals, I will be uploading and selling a lot of different resources such as entire unit three and four notes um, on Etsy. So please um, follow that. Um, if you ever do want to get some of those resources, just click the link in my Etsy um, and feel free to always give me any feedback. But let's um, get into this one. So I will be showing you my IA3 from last year. And I did get a 20 out of 20 on this one. And I'll be using this ISMG here. Now this ISMG is not mine. You can tell that this person only got a 17 out of 20. This is just the um, sample one that I found on the QCAA website for the high, high scoring response. So this isn't my ISMG, but this is the only one I could find. So let's have a look. As always, you guys have probably seen by now. Oh, also I did forget to say, Every teacher is different. Every teacher marks specifically. This is what I did. This is what you should do. But if your teacher ever tells you to do anything special or niche, just do it. They're the ones who are marking you. So make sure you do it. Let's get started with our easy two marks, the ones that we always want to get. And those are our communication marks. Now, these are going to be exactly the same to you to your IA2. We want to be um, using our references appropriately. So my school used APA 7. Um, majority of schools are either going to use APA or Harvard. QCAA doesn't specify what they want, but your school actually does that. So my school used APA 7. As you can see, I've included my in-text references here whenever I have... Um, used any information when I've used the diagram I have also referenced and then down at the very end I have my reference list and you can probably see that my reference list for this assignment was massive and yours by far does not have to be this big I'm looking at this now in shock that I use this much, much information but for some reason I I don't know, I struggled to find websites that had all of the information I needed. So yours by far does not need to be that big. Literally, it could be maybe this big and you would still be perfectly fine. But just make sure that it's not too small and that you've referenced everything that you um, possibly can. We need to have appropriate use of genre conventions. So as I move through this assignment, you should lay it out the same. So you should have the same headings and same subheadings. But other than that, that includes things like making sure we are labeling our figures, um, making sure that we say for, hold on, I have an example in here somewhere, unless I'm thinking of the IA2. Hmm. Okay, I might be thinking of the IA2, but genre conventions is basically making sure that you're using your research articles, you're referencing when you need, you have it laid out in a way that makes sense, and you'll see this as we move through this um this assignment, that's what it is. The last one is our fluent and concise use of scientific language and representations. So the represent, pardon, the representations are like the graphs in this situation. So just making sure that, um, you know, you can see it. I know a lot of these graphs, sometimes they can be um, quite blurry or maybe you've screenshotted them from an article and they can be a little bit difficult there. Just making sure that we can see them and that you haven't accidentally cut off um, figure headings or anything. Also, be really, really careful with what you do. I had a girl in my grade um, when, oh, I, I cannot believe she did this. You should never do this, but you will get caught. And she um, would screenshot her um, research, her graphs from her research articles and cut off the 
Axie's titles and put them to show the relationship she wanted. So she would change what the um, articles are actually measuring. Never, ever do that. I cannot believe she admitted that to me. The fluent and concise use of scientific language is just making sure that we make sense and we are speaking scientifically. No opinions, short, sharp, no waffling, no fluffiness. That's not what a science assignment is. So we all want to get those two marks. Also, I have seen um, issues with this with people in the past. Past, Make sure you are using Australian spelling of words. So don't spell colour, colour. Don't spell metre, metre. Make sure you're spelling them the Australian way. Okay, okay, let's get into some of the more chunky stuff. And we're going to look at this first box here. So what we need to do is we need to have an informed application of the properties and structure of organic materials or chemical synthesis and design demonstrated by a considered rationale, identifying clear development of the research question from the claim. So the two important things here are we've got a really nice, well-rounded, considered rationale, and we've clearly developed the research question from that. So everything in your research question should be mentioned in the rationale. So my research question is down here. I talk about carbon monoxide, combustion, plant derived ethanol glass gasoline blends and spark ignition engines. You should see that throughout my um, rationale, I mentioned every single one of those key points. So I've clearly and really obviously spoken about it and used it in my research question. So that's how we develop our research question from the claim. Now you should start off with your claim. It can be one simple sentence. It was claimed that this, and then you start unpacking it and I do it in order. So I start off with plant derived fuels and then speak about what they are, give some examples and talk about how they are used in Australia. I then talk a bit about fossil fuels because if we're talking about plant derived fuels being of the future, then what are we currently using and why do we want to change it? So I do talk about, you know, the issues with fossil fuels and that gives me a rationale for this investigation because why would I be investigating plant derived fuels if what we've already got is perfect? So I should say, these are the issues with fossil fuels and this is why we're trying to find something new. An alternative is ethanol and that's when I start talking about that. I then talk about what makes ethanol a plant derived fuel. So I quickly give the fermentation process and you can use that from starch. So I do give a little bit of um, background here and I do include the structure of, well not the structure, yes the structures during the process of that fermentation. So I show how that starch is broken down into glucose. I then keep moving, talking about how you actually turn it into ethanol. And I do end up with the final equation here. And this does end up important because I will speak about this later on in the assessment. So only include things in here if you are going to refer back to them. Don't just include this cute equation. If it's not in the research question, it's not in the discussion, it's nowhere there. But in this case, I did, so it is important. You can also include representations if it makes it easier to understand. So that comes into two dot points. In the considered rationale and in the fluent and concise use of scientific language and representations, including a diagram or a picture, like a picture speaks a thousand words. You are going to be way, way, way more clear and concise if you can say this here is the process. It's easy to understand and you're not wasting all of these words trying to waffle on when you can just really simply put it in a diagram. Super duper important to do. I then talk about how, um, because realistically, when you do your research, you find that Ethanol and gas, like ethanol is not just used pop in a car straight up. You're never going to put pure ethanol in a car. So we're going to have to investigate what is actually used. And what is actually used is ethanol gasoline blends. So I talk a little bit about what that actually is, just so my research question makes sense when I say ethanol blends. I then talk about the structure um, really quickly of ethanol and gasoline because they do have an effect on combustion emissions. Remember, this is chemistry and we want to include as much chemistry as possible. What is emitted when these are combusted depend on their chemical properties and their structure. So we do want to include those structures in there. I then talk about when um, I'm talking about a future fuel, what makes something futuristic? So I decide to go with environmental impact. 
That is the reason why we're moving towards environmental fuels. I talk about what gasoline and ethanol blended gasoline produces. And then I picked one gas specifically because we do want a specific and relevant research question. The gas I end up choosing was carbon monoxide because that's what I could find sources on. So when you do your research, you should never come up with a research question and then find sources to fit it. You need to find three sources that all say the same thing, three research articles, and then write your research question. So I happen to find three research articles about ethanol gasoline blends that specifically looked at carbon monoxide emissions. So that's what I made my research question. If you found three about carbon dioxide or nitrous oxide compound emissions, then change your research question to that. But you want to be as specific as possible because if you're just going very general and very vague, you can't really make any real conclusions. I then um, talk really quickly about spark ignition engines because all ethanol blended gasoline engines are spark ignition. So I do specify that. I did notice that some things were like computer generated or use a different um, engine in some articles, but I made sure I went with the spark ignition. At the very end, I do, whoops, I do state my research question. Now your research question should be specific and relevant. So mine mentions a lot of very specific things and I've already shown you this a little bit, but it does say carbon monoxide, that's specific and it is relevant to, um, you know, fuels and fuels of the future and environmental impact. Combustion, obviously, plant-derived ethanol gasoline blends because you can get ethanol not only from fermentation, but I believe it is hydration. I have not done organic chemistry in a while, so don't bully me. I'm doing it next trimester. But you need to specify that it's going to be plant-derived because if you're getting it from hydrogen, I'm pretty sure it's, pretty sure it's hydration that it is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, then that's not exactly fuel of the future, is it? So make sure you specify that. I also specified ethanol gasoline blends because you can't just put ethanol in a car. And I made sure to say that I'm comparing it to pure gasoline, which is what most of us currently use. And then I just pop in spark ignition engine and make sure that I'm specifying the transport sector. So I'm looking at this within cars, buses, trucks, all of those sorts of things, not powering something else. So that is my rationale. Um, it is pretty big, but it is very, very important. The other thing in this first part we need to pay attention to is the selection of sufficient and relevant sources. So when I'm talking about, you know, Australian, um, how many Australians use fossil fuels and the impacts of that, where better to go than the Australian government and find official reports? When I'm talking about greenhouse gases and natural things, well, the National Geographic is pretty good. International Energy Agency, United Nations, all of these are quite relevant sources. And you can also see um, in here, I've got a billion sources. So I've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's in this first little bit here. And then I keep going. I definitely have sufficient sources in here. Make sure you reference everything you possibly can. Next, we are going to move on to the sort of like the research analysis part of this. Now, you should actually do your research first in a research investigation. Find your data. It can take you forever. I really, really recommend signing up for free um, to be a part of the Queensland State Library. That's your best bet for chemistry. For bio, PubMed is really great. Um, but Queensland State Library is probably where you're going to find the most success. I know it can be very difficult to find free things. But your three um, research articles, they must be from scientific journals. If you are not getting them from a scientific journal, then you're not doing this assessment correctly. So a scientific journal could be science. Oh, okay, yeah, there's one just straight up called science. There's one straight up called nature. There are a gazillion scientific journals out there. And you can't just go to a random website. You can't go to Britannica and get a graph off there or Wikipedia. You need to find scientific journals. And I would strongly recommend from the Queensland State Library. If you guys want a video on how to find these journals, um, and it's the same for all three sciences, please let me know, put it in the comments and I can help you guys out with that. But we really wanna make sure we're finding really good quality um, evidence. So 
that comes into the identification of sufficient and relevant evidence. So all the evidence needs to be about the same thing, preferably, and it needs to be sufficient. So in this, I've got three sources of um, evidence, I believe. In my bio, I actually only had two, and I still got a 20 out of 20. So if you've got some really good quality evidence that says a lot, which you'll see in my biology video, you can use only two, but you two is the bare minimum three is ideal and four is too many so we are looking for about three we um want to thoroughly identify identify the relevant trends patterns and relationships and the limitations of evidence we also want to do a bit of insightful interpretation so i'm going to take you through my evidence section here now so I start off evidence one, I've copy and pasted my thing in here and you need to make sure that you've included axes and units and all of that. Don't cut anything off. You should then um, title it something with a reference. So mine is really simply carbon monoxide emissions for ethanol gasoline blends. I make sure I say who it is by and I give a little bit of an explanation of what it actually is. What is it showing? What fuels did it use? What... Um, method of ex experimental method did they use so in this one we actually used a mathematical model so quasi-dimensional two-zone model of a spark ignition engine and it was simulated by this program so that's probably why it looks quite nice here that is a limitation and we will talk about that so make sure you give a quick one sentence context of what this experiment measured and how did it do that you then need to give the trend. So this one here is super simple. For all blends, as engine speed increased, carbon monoxide emissions increased. And to address the research question, talk about specifically what you were looking at. And I found specifically that as ethanol content increases, carbon monoxide emissions decrease. I then need to talk a little bit about the limitations of the data. So in the student experiment, it was best to put all the limitations at the end. But in some research investigations, it's more beneficial to put them after each piece of evidence, just so it's really super clear. So limitations for this piece of evidence included the fact that it was a mathematical simulation. And this is predictive rather than realistic. Obviously, there's going to be a whole heap of stuff going on in a real car so random like the entropy of the world that's what my chemistry teacher um, at uni would always say entropy is the randomness there's a, so many random things that could happen that could change the results in real life compared to what they would be on the um mathematical model so i just said that this limits the accuracy of the conclusions we're drawing i also say that this is limited to the engine speeds that um are studied i give the typical engine speed of a real car and you can see that that's way higher than what this is actually measuring so i was sort of a bit like when we're driving real cars on the real road then we aren't really sure what is going on so this is good to show the general trends, but it isn't the best. And I make sure that I do mention that. When we are talking about um, our limitations and our quality of evidence, we do have a little acronym that I'll take you through at the end of this, but let's keep moving on to this piece of data. Again, I really quickly say who it's by, what it measured and how, and then I go through the actual um, trends here. So, and I give actual values and use that approximately sign. Don't just say, oh yeah, that's 2.8% because how can you actually tell? So make sure that we are using that approximately sign. Um, I do mention the contradictions here. So I say that this data follows the opposite trend to the model and even though, um, so because this, the model above spoke about engine speed as well. And this one actually has opposite things happening as engine speed increases. And I say, even though engine speed isn't relevant to the research question, this deviation sort of shows that there might be an error with either the model or the experimental data, because these trends shouldn't be opposing each other. So I can recognize, and that's being insightful. This hasn't got anything to do with the research question, the engine speed, but it is showing me that there may be a problem with this evidence. So that is how you're insightful in these scenarios, going beyond when necessary. Now, only go beyond when it actually means something. Like in this case, I don't know if this data is amazing because it contradicts the other stuff, but only go beyond if you actually mean it. Otherwise, you're just waffling. I then end with an overall statement of what I got from this data. 
my limitations for this one included that it only used like a small number of ethanol blends and um we really should be looking at a larger range of fuel blends what is the optimum what is the prime thing that we could use here the best and i also talk about on um, the low speeds again again this is not as high speed as um a real car would be i then move on to i believe this is my last piece of evidence so again i give that quick summary in this one and you can totally use data that has extra data in here so let's have a look at this one so for this one We've got like six other kinds of fuels right here, but I said, no, we are only looking at these top three, which are the ethanol blends. You can totally do that. It's hard to find data. You just need to make a statement if you're only looking at part of the graph. I then um, again identify the really obvious trends here and I sort of link it back to the other one. So I say that this data shows a larger difference in CO um, emissions, but we don't know about engine speed. There's no engine speed here. We've got one here and one here, but we don't have an actual trend going on. We don't have multiple, more than two speed values. So then being very insightful, which is actually a syllabus dot point, I connect that back to figure five or six. And I say, well, figure five and six contradicted each other with the engine speed. But because this one doesn't have um, the actual things and it only shows percentage difference, I actually don't know anything about these engine speeds. So I can't... Um, I can't make a judgment on whether five or six was more accurate when it comes to the trends. I then talk about the limitations and these limitations included that there was low ethanol content like E3 is very low compared to some of our other data which had like E40. I also talk about there only being two engine speeds showing and that just means you want to um, investigate something in as many circumstances as possible. So that was the limitations of that one. I then have um, a bit of a summary of my evidence here and an explanation. So if I come up here, we um, have justified scientific arguments. So if we have justified scientific arguments, then we should really be including actual referenced chemistry in here. So down at the very bottom, it's time for me to have justified scientific arguments where I'm going to have references got all of these ones okay so what i talk about is i, sh I say that all of the evidence show that high ethanol content re um, resulted in lower co emissions and then i talk about something quite interesting carbon monoxide is produced in an incomplete combustion and ethanol is more likely to undergo incomplete combustion um Oh, pardon me. No, ethanol is less likely to undergo incomplete combustion than gasoline. So it's going to produce less carbon monoxide. And then you can even further to really put the chemistry in there, include two equations. So this is the incomplete combustion of ethanol and octane. And to justify this evidence and say that this is supported by chemical background, you can see that this produces two moles of carbon monoxide so every one mole of ethanol produces two moles of carbon dioxide whereas every one mole of octane which is the main component of gasoline produces eight moles of carbon dioxide so gasoline should produce more carbon monoxide than ethanol given that the same amount is burning so that's how we justify our conclusions using scientific evidence and if it didn't match with these equations, then you would say, right, something else must be going on to skew this data. So your, um, it doesn't matter if scientific evidence goes against what you have found, but you should talk about why that could be. Are there other things mixed in with gasoline that's causing, you know, the funny things? Whatever. You should always try and come back to the actual chemistry. Research investigations, especially in chemistry and physics, are very easy to stray away from the actual chemistry we need to be doing. This is all about the properties of organic materials. We need to make sure that we are coming back to that one. For our last um, set here, we are talking 
about sort of our conclusion section. So we should have insightful interpretation of our research evidence, and that should be justified conclusions linked to the research question. So I've already um, done a bit of the justifying. So the justifying should come in two ways. It should come from scientific literature, so those equations I just showed you, and it should also come from the evidence you actually found. And you need to link that back to the research question. The easiest way to really obviously link it back is to say, this is the research question, and then go through um, your results. Now, teachers and confirmers can be a bit lazy, especially confirmers. Confirmers are looking for you signposting saying this and then this. They might even do Command F or Control F and type in to see if you've included certain terms. Make it easy for your teachers and really step it out super duper obviously. You should, when answering the research question and justifying your conclusions, use data that you have found. The last thing we need to look at is our quality of evidence and our limitations. So what do our dot points say about this? We need to have an insightful discussion of the quality of ev um, evidence. And when we do that, we want to use the crap model now we need to trust that i remember this correctly so i'm going to do a super quick um google just because i want to tell you the right thing so the c stands for currency was this study done in the 90s not very good was this study done in the last five years better r is relevance does it actually relate fully back to your um research question a is authority. Did this come from Britannica or did it come from a well-esteemed scientific article? A is accuracy. Has this been corroborated with other research or is it quite different? Is it very one of a kind? And then P comes from purpose. Why does this article exist? Does it exist because it was sponsored by a specific um, university or company? So you'll find in biology a lot was this sponsored by a pharmaceutical company or was this done for an actual proper purpose? Who is behind it? So those are the things that we need to look at. So I said that my quality of evidence was pretty reasonable. And this is why I spoke about. Um, so this first point was my unreasonable part and the rest of it um, was, I'm pretty sure, increasing it. But my big thing was um, I use some mathematical models. And although that is relevant, it could have been more relevant if it was done in a real car. I also talk about corroboration here, and that is sort of um, where the accuracy comes into play. I do say that it was quite good because all of the studies were very recent, which comes into currency, and they were um, from accredited normal scientific journals, which the authority, authority comes into that. I then had a look at the last thing, and I said all articles were relevant to the research question and appear unbiased and error-free. So I did a bit of digging into where they came from, and that covered the purpose part of it. So that is how you um, look at your quality of evidence. We need to extrapolate our findings to the claim. So don't forget about that claim at the very beginning. Plant-derived fuels are fuels of the future. Now, you guys will have a different claim, but you need to relate back to that one. So this is my little paragraph about relating back there. I talk um, about alone. This cannot determine whether ethanol is a suitable future fuel. So basically, I give a quick summary of the findings, but then I say, Fuels of the future is quite vague. So even though ethanol is good in this environmental impact sense, what about, you know, other emissions? What about financial viability? What about sustainability? Have I considered those? And I said no. So I can't support or rebuke the claim. And you probably won't be able to. Often you will be able to say, this was the claim. It addressed this sections. However, there is more investigation that needs to be done. The last thing we need to look at um, are our improvements and extensions, and they need to be considered and relevant. So improvements should come from the limitations and extensions should come from the claim. So let's have a look here. My improvement said to investigate more ethanol blends because what is the optimum here? We won't know until we investigate a larger scale. I also said investigate more engine speeds. That is probably more accurate for what actual cars would actually be traveling at. So those came from my limitations. My extensions um, 
are related to the claim. So I say emissions are produced during the fermentation process. Does burning the fuel produce more or less emissions than the actual fermentation process? So that um, considers the other factors and that is related to the claim. It is still looking at ethanol, but a different aspect. I then talk about different plant derived fuels being as an extension because they might have different properties that make them more suitable than ethanol. So those are my extensions and this is my whole assignment. I know this was a long video, but I do hope you found it quite helpful. Please like and subscribe. And if you guys are looking for resources such as flashcards, I have up currently, but otherwise um, I'll be putting up notes for the externals and all of that sort of stuff. Basically just I've filled out the syllabus with all of my notes. Please head to my Etsy store. It's linked in the description and in the bio. If you have any questions or want me to cover anything specific, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe.